masks on, pants off. Or stand on 12, hit on 16. The thing is, how come I want to do all these social activities mid-pandemic that before I was like, nah, I'd rather just chill in my apartment. I mean, dancing on a Wednesday night definitely was fulfilling, but now it takes on the aura of spiritual communion. So these last few months in quarantine have been a reckoning of sorts. I just couldn't pretend I wasn't desperately lonely. So I did two things. One, play FaceTime blackjack with my brother in LA, who, which led to a number of hangovers and a stiff debt owed, but I did cherish those Tuesday, Thursday interactions, even longed for that Zoom ping, notifying me he entered my waiting room. Two, create a profile on every dating site, which resulted in a number of shockingly immediate, humorous, but explicitly platonic email exchanges. Each one had its own rhythm and expectations, so it felt like I had to balance all these relationship demands. I even made a Google spreadsheet to keep track. All this responsibility satisfied until Austin. On their fifth text message, they said, listen, it seems we're both craving the same thing. We've both been tested. Let's meet up. I was a bit apprehensive, but of course I agreed. The night before our date, I dreamed bodies and smell. I dreamed of leaning into their neck and sniffing. I imagined raising their arms and breathing in their scent. I imagined unzipping their pants and just inhaling them into me. I also dreamed of blackjack, of cards sliding across a verdant green felt table and knocking twice demanding, hit me with a smile. Clearly being the instigator was their thing because after suggesting we get a beer to go and a walk around the empty streets of downtown Berkeley, they said, so, I'm game if you are. This was my moment, I thought. I stared at them, mask bedazzled with an a sparkly a, a cab, a sleeveless black concert t-shirt, shoulders bare, armpit hair just visible at the creases of shoulder and torso, a denim skirt and black yoga pants. I stepped to them, pulling my mask down below my nose, ready to breathe them in. They stepped back, no touching, but let's drive to the Kit Ridge parking garage. As I pulled up to their, to their pale blue Subaru, I revved my Accord, rrr, rrr, a satisfying purr. I saw their car had a kid's seat in the back. The self-automated garage had a good number of cars on level one and two, but level three had just a smattering. Enough cars for us to not look too suspicious they raced ahead to the corner parking spot and backed into it, waving for me to do the same, shouting out their window to leave six feet distance between. We killed our engines, got out and stood apart. I waited. They pressed their legs together and slid down their yoga pants. The first and only time they touched me when they reached out to find balance as each foot pulled free. They said, Listen, get in your back seat and keep your window up, but crack it so you can hear me. They pulled up their skirt and slipped underwear down, nothing fancy, a purple cotton thing, but I stared like they were lacy and all for me. They balled them up and tossed them into their back seat. I watched it land perfectly in the child car seat. They growled, go, and I went. I got in the back seat, I turned to face them, I cracked the window down, and they slipped off the elastic around one ear. It was the sexiest thing I've seen. Mask dangling their mouth, full of lip, full lips and teeth, white and square. They said, lean back and spread your legs for me. I want to see everything. I smiled and kind of shrugged like, okay. Do it, they demanded, like they weren't even playing. I laid back and I realized my dome light was on and I worried for a second about my battery, but I remembered I had jumper cables. I yanked my pants off. I placed my feet on the edge of the windows. 
I spread myself open. I felt vulnerable and on display, like being inspected for approval. My body though felt new. The soft fur of my ass cheeks, the way they curved into the center of me, the thrum of my cock pulsing and filling out, the way my balls nestled and fit so perfectly. I heard a loud huffing and I realized that they were coming. I sat up to watch, they leaned against their car. I saw their pubic hair untrimmed and full, the soft, slow way they stroked themselves. They finished and pushed down their skirt and slipped on their mask. I said, wait, give me your hand, please. They stepped to the window and three delicate fingers slid into my car. I moved my face right in front of them and sniffed in their scent like it could save my life. I closed my eyes in appreciation. Then I heard her, their car start and the squeal of rubber on painted cement as they drove off, no matter, I thought. That night, playing blackjack, I won hand after hand, hitting confidently on 16 and never busting on 12. I found my way to 20 or 21 almost every time. My brother said, damn, what happened to you? I said, I guess I'm feeling lucky and not so alone. 